All right, so the big idea for all the networks is you want to share content to first try to get followers. Well, here's the big secret with Google+. Plus: Take advantage of collections and communities. Let's look at collections first. On the left side, click collections. You will see three tabs at the top. Featured, following, yours. Featured collections, these are random people and companies throughout Google Plus that have created a collection, which is a folder of content about a topic. You, perhaps, one day can be featured. I don't know what the secret is to get featured, but most likely is that you post interesting things and are active. It doesn't, I don't think you need to have a thousand followers to be featured one day. So, free advertising. If you create a collection and put your stuff there, you could be found. Um, we'll see how to create a collection in a moment, but here's... I'm getting one that says how to use Google+. Plus. I'm sure he's getting lots of followers out of that because people want to know that. People want to look at interesting things, so here's someone that put night photography. Notice over here, Al Alex uh, Lapidus put this one. Derek Ross made that one, Alex Garcia made that one, Offer Dove made that one. So some of them are companies, some of them are people. <laughs> Tina Veshik, Mike Iwaniki, etc. So a company or a person could create a collection. It could be featured at some point, free advertising. Under the following tab, well, if you have chosen to follow any collection, you will see it listed here so that then you can unfollow it if you'd like. But here under Featured, I'm gonna, I could say, I'm interested in this Google Plus content. Don't, don't click Follow yet. But what you could do is on any of these collections, click on it, and you'll see, well, what's being posted here? The three C's of Google Plus article, uh, notifications article. So this person is either creating original content or putting uh, repurposed content out there and putting it in a nice handy collection that might be useful for me to follow. 93,000 other people also said it's useful. So here from the screen, if you don't see that collection and it sounds useful to you, we have search, search how to Google Plus. But any collection that you see, you can preview it before you decide to follow. Well, what's this one about WordPress tips and tutorials? If I click, it'll show me two hours ago this was posted, one day ago this was posted, etc., etc. And so far, 140,000 people have followed that collection. That means 140,000 people are very interested in that content, and every time 34SP company shares something to that collection, potentially 140 people, thousand see it. 140,000 people see it. So there's a value to clicking follow to some of these because then now uh, the owner of the collection saw that I followed them. They get a notification. Collections that I follow will be displayed in my home screen and it may let other people know that I followed a, a collection. Google Tips and Advice, that sounds good, I'll follow that. Google More Tips, can't go wrong with that. Night Photography, everyone remember to please mute your devices if you haven't done so yet. Question? Yes. Uh, should we wait until we have that three to five posts before <coughs> yeah. we follow because we don't want them to notice us? Yes, exactly, that's related to that. Um, this step would be step two, and step one is those original posts first. So Communities. I'm sorry, collections. First we'll do collections. Follow collections from people or businesses to keep up to date with a topic. Okay, on the flip side, I want that. I want, perhaps for one day, my collection to be featured by Google and get people to follow it, to pay attention to me. I want people to see my content, to search for a topic and find my content. So, my collections, yours, I have no collections. I have no groups of content. Let's take a look at yours. This might be more valuable than the other two. Let's look at yours. 
create a collection. Name, tagline, visibility. Okay, so if I'm Victor's Bakery, I can make a collection called Cookies. So everything that I'm going to share about cookies will be here, organized. I have space. Let's see how big can I go? I can go all the way up to this point. Perhaps to make a longer name, perhaps with a name full of keywords that people might search for. If I only call my collection cookies, many people are using that very common word. But what if I'm making a collection called healthy cookies? Only the best ingredients. If it fits, think about using it. You also have, however, a tagline. So perhaps I could put only the best ingredients under tagline. I have 80 characters there. Healthy cookies for you and your family. Sure, that's a possible name for my collection. These are keywords people might search for. You know, healthy food for my family. Those are some of those keywords that could be found. And I have 80 more characters there to put in another sentence full of keywords. One of the best ingredients and healthiest choices. It's pretty smart about if someone search for, searches for healthy, healthiest might appear. So don't think about just putting that with keywords like healthy, comma, healthiest, comma, healthier, comma, blah, blah, blah. Put a real sentence. Modern SEO, search engine optimization, is about being real, not about gaming the system with putting 10 variations of a keyword. It's about putting real content that helps you get found and, and the search engines and, and social networks to help you get found. Visible to public. Your circles, only you custom. We haven't talked about circles yet, but circles are sort of like a way to organize your followers and your following. It's a bigger topic for a moment. Remind me to come back to circles in just a moment. But who should see my collection? Most likely public. Anyone can find it if it's public. If it's anything else, the audience may be limited. One set can't be changed cannot be changed if you set it to the wrong thing. Public is usually the right thing. Create. Here's a little bit of branding design for your collection. I can change the photo up here. It gives me a generic photo. Or I can click there and choose a different generic photo. Or I can upload my own photo. None of these are really food-related for my business, so I really would want to upload my own photo. I don't know the size of that. We can look it up. But it's a rectangular photo. If you've got a bunch of photos that are tall, that might not be the best size to use for this. We're seeing a rectangular photo for the main profile image. We're seeing a rectangular photo for the uh, collection image. We saw rectangular photos on Twitter. We're going to see rectangular photos on Facebook. That should be telling you rectangular photos are most of what is mostly the right size for most networks. A little bit of color choices, not a lot. That's not the right color purple for my business, but it's close. Visibility can't be changed. People that have you in circles automatically follow this collection. So this is saying Google uses the terminology of circles <coughs> as a follow. On Twitter, it's a follow. On Google Plus, it's a circle. On Facebook, it's a like. Yeah, like has two, two meanings there. But on Twitter, I've chosen to follow an account. I want to see all their stuff. On Google Plus, I've chosen to circle an account. I chose to see their stuff. On Facebook, I've, chose, I've chosen to like that page to see their stuff different terminology for the same concept. Following. Someone is following my account on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, whatever. On YouTube, they call it a subscribe. Someone subscribed to your account on YouTube. It's the same thing as a follow. 
what this is saying. People that have followed you automatically follow this collection. So I may build 10 collections. I want to make it for people to follow all my content because it will be separated if someone chose to follow only one collection of mine, they will only see that content. Maybe my business, I have collections about recipes and collection about political opinions. Not everyone wants to see both of those. So people can follow an individual collection. Here I'm saying if someone chose to follow my main profile, they automatically also followed the cookie collection and the politics collection. Usually I'm going to say this is good leave that on so that people can follow more about you and I wouldn't realistically re be putting such two separate uh, collections on one account. Why would this bakery be putting collections about food and politics? It's going to be all about food. It's just a way to help you get found more and followed. Save that. This now takes me to my screen where I have the collection. My collection. It's visible. Share your first post. There's a pencil there for me to share. That pencil pops up just like before. Pictures, text, posts, locations, etc. At the top it says, you're about to share to this collection. That was the point earlier when I was on the home screen and I was about to share this was going to share public if I have collections I can choose a collection I can create a collection under my collections here then I'm editing this collection I want to let more people know about it I've got share yes well, it's the one I just made, Healthy Cookies. Share it with yourself? This share right here? Or the share a moment ago? Uh, what I mean is, when I was on my home screen, for example, I'm about to share, I'm about to post something. So I need to decide where is it going. Is it going public to everyone, or is it going to a, a collection? I think it's the share pencil. That's what I'm saying. If you click the share pencil, or the share button up here, this is about posting something to Google+. I then have to decide, is it going to be public on Google+, or shared to a collection? And so under the collections, on my current collections, I can then let more people know about that collection. I can tweet about my collection. I can send my collection over to Facebook, copy it so that I can paste it on an email, or send it to other people on Google+. Plus. This is pretty new. They didn't have this before that you can send from Google Plus to the other networks easily. Now it looks like you do. You need a Twitter account first. It'll say log into Twitter. But I can share this content to another network. And then on the kebab menu, I can go there and edit some features of the collection, like the title and such, not the visibility. Who has followed my collection? I can see who are the people that like this so much that they followed it. Delete it and go get help. If I go back to collections. Now under my under yours, you'll see all your collections. You can create as many as you want. The thing that I would say though is don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't create 20 collections and never put anything in them. Create three collections, create two collections, and use them. Put stuff in them. Put pictures and text and videos once in a while. Use your social network. This always happens to beginners. We're very excited, we're gung-ho, we use it for a week or a month or so, and then we start to use it less. And then we stop using it so it's not as effective as it was. You have to be active on these things. Yes? We'll come back. Collections. Um, of an effective way, this is an effective way to hopefully reach an audience that really cares about your content by organization. Any questions on collections before we go on? Yes? What's the benefit of following? 
besides them seeing you. That's one of the big benefits. That way you can alert them that you exist. But the other benefit is for you to get inspiration, for you to see what are other, what are other food-related people posting, what's hot, what's interesting, what gives me an idea to post something similar. Not that I'm going to take their thing and share it, because that's just free advertising for them. But if I'm getting an idea that, wow, for some reason today, uh, you know, chocolate chip cookies are very popular, so I should share a chocolate chip cookie that I photographed. So just to get ideas, inspiration by other people. Are other people now your Yeah, they can go see okay. your profile. Well, like I said earlier, that <coughs> you don't have to have a direct competition. You don't have to follow the person down the street. Right. I'm going to follow someone in a different state. Okay. So. But if you're an online business, you don't want to do that, right? Yeah, there are limitations to the value of following other companies to some degree, but still, you have to weigh it. Yeah, people are going to know who you're following. They will know you followed them. Other people can see who you follow. If that's too much of a negative, it's fine to not do it. But I do usually recommend with all of our clients, we are going to follow related businesses for those points of seeing what's a trend, checking the competition, getting inspiration, and then we're going to do it our own way and hopefully succeed. Final questions. So I, I did the share thing mm -hmm. on the Google Plus. Mm -hmm. It's going back to your profile. You shared your uh, item, and so it's going to your profile. Whatever you've shared is on your profile. Everything that you've shared, people can see your profile, and they'll see what you've shared. So you've let your you've let your followers know uh, this is. Uh, this is my profile, this is my content. You might need to refresh the browser because sometimes it doesn't do it right away. The next secret weapon of Google+, Plus, which I think is much more effective than collections, is communities. So I'm going to say here, communities way better than collections. Collections only you can create and only you can add to your collection. People can reply to a particular item in a collection, but no one else can contribute to the collection. Only you can. Communities are places where lots of people and businesses on Google Plus join together and talk about a topic. Share a photo of a particular topic. Share a link of a particular topic. Reply to each other. Build you know, networking. Build community. Be social on the social network. This one is the better one, as we will see right now. They have stuff like that on Facebook as well. Groups, they exactly. Groups, yeah. Exactly. How many of you know about Facebook groups? Raise your hand. Not that many. How many of you are active on Facebook groups? Even less. So Google, uh, so Facebook groups do have a value. They're not, they didn't take off as much as they could have. And when we talk about Facebook, we'll talk about groups. But Google Plus has a version of it, and I think it's much more successful on Google Plus. Uh, anecdotally and through other journals and such that I read, people often get better results if they post the exact same thing on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+, they often get better results on Google+. The people on Google+, seem to be more active if you do it right. And we're talking about how to do it right. So, communities. I get a recommendation of what I might be interested in. As I started to share a little bit about food stuff, it's possibly recommending food communities, 26,000 members. Small business marketing, 34,000 members. People are pretty pictures, so 2.5 million members. I have a list up here. If I've joined a community, they will be listed here. If I um, 
if I want to figure out the value of these communities, there's a value to uh, joining communities, as I'll show you right here. Um, this is a built-in captive audience. I have zero followers. If I join the recipe community, I suddenly have access to 26,000 members. Don't click join yet, but watch this. If you click on a community, you can preview it. And I can see Linda shared this, Maggie shared this, Nenny shared this, uh, Mapo shared that, etc. People or businesses are sharing content. And I'm seeing some activity. Linda shared this. It had four um, plus ones and one comment. And I'm just going on what else. Um, this company here shared this. We have a few plus ones. So people are, people are active. People might be commenting or replying and such. I have a business about food. I could think about sharing a recipe, not the original recipe for our cookies, but a version of our cookies. I could share a recipe at this community, and possibly 26,000 people could see it. I have zero followers, but possibly 26,000 people could see it. Yes? How many people get on the It's It's pretty much order update. 12 hours ago, one day ago, two days ago, two days ago. So it's just date order. So this is one of the great things about communities that uh, if I go look at, okay, the small business marketing community, all of these small business owners uh, are, are here. What if I have some great small business advice? Or what if I sell my services as a small business? If I uh, share to these people here, I reach 34,000 people, even though I have zero followers. The way you share to those people is to join a community. If I were to click join on any community, I get the pencil. That pencil wasn't there a moment ago when I hadn't joined. So if I join a community, I have the ability to post to this community. And whatever I post here, such as, we offer the best small business marketing. I'm not going to share this one, but uh, I'm writing something. Marketing solutions at an affordable price. And then a link. Um, I'm sort of like targeting my message to people that might care most about it. That's the whole point of jo joining a community. I can aim my message to a targeted group. There are many caveats, many warnings to this, however. Communities. A way to target specific willing audiences. If I've joined a certain community on a topic, it's because I want to see that stuff. So if I share to that community, and if it's on topic, I'm reaching that audience. But there are many catches. There's this, this catch and this catch. There's many, there's many be careful. There's many caveats. <coughs> Join um, communities of at least 1,000 people. Because if it's a, if the community is too small, it's just like a gene pool in the real world, you, it can't sustain itself. So with a thousand people, that might be too small. Let's say I'm uh, in the communities screen here. Uh, I don't I'm not finding a community that really makes sense. So perhaps at the top, search cookies. And if I search, it will give me results of 
collections, communities, people, and posts. So under any screen, you'll get these kinds of results. But I was under communities. I searched a keyword. It gives me all of these possibilities. I want to know more communities about cookies. I sell cookies. I want to meet other people that are interested in cookies. So here, cakes and bake sweets and treats, 78,000 members. Baking, 92,000. And just goes on, and the communities gets, get, keep getting smaller. Desserts and goodies, 1,700. Deliciousness. 21 members. When you're getting below a thousand people, it's too small of a community. You're not going to have enough activity or interest. So at least a thousand members, I would say. There is a max less than a million. Try not to get into the million member communities because we saw it. what hap what appears at the top are the newest posts. If there's a million people on it, they're posting and posting and posting and posting, and your stuff is going to get pushed down. So these communities with lots of members might be too big. You're going to get lost. You're going to get drowned out. So somewhere in the huge range of 1,000 to 1 million, you're going to find the right spot. Usually 20,000, 50,000, maybe 200,000, but 1,000 people, 2,000 people, pretty small, you might not get a lot of results. Join communities that are active. So simply because you see a bunch of results, don't click join. First, click the name of the community to preview it. You click the name of the community. Is it active? You'll tell if it's active by the number of stats below each item. 13 plus 1s, 9, 4, 3, 7, 25, seems to be an active community. If you see 20,000 members of a community and they mostly have 1 plus 1, it's not active. People are just spamming. People are putting something and they're not paying attention to each other. This community seems to be pretty active. People are commenting. People are plus wanting it, they're liking it, people might be sharing it. If I look at some of these other communities, like the cookie connection on Google+, Plus, well, it's under my limit, but uh, it's under my minimum. Let's say this one, 2,600. Well, it's above my minimum, but I'm still not going to join until I check it out. Nothing, 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 nothing. What's that? The top is only based on time. When they shared this, yeah, this was shared three days ago, two weeks ago, etc. No, it's the activity in the community. This person, Manisha, shared this three days ago. This this was the most recent post. So it's at the top. It's simply based on time, not popularity or anything. Since since three days. Yeah. So 2,600 members, no one's active. You know what's funny? I was kind of hopping around and there was a crowd with the party because I think a lot of people would be interested in the community. And then there was this one that was like, you know, there isn't any more than 40 people that plus like mm -hmm. a picture, so it's interesting. That's, it, that's common. It, it seems, I'm not sure, and this is obviously because it's day one, but it seems like people are not as dialoguey about the community in terms of communication. It's going to depend on the community. The plus one, just like every network is the most easy one to do, I plus one. I feel good and I move on. The commenting part of it, yeah, that's less and that's the same thing on Twitter, that's the same thing on Facebook, all the networks. It's more work, more effort for people to reply to something. So I still would go by these plus ones and such and the shares. Do you know of communities that are like more, I guess, active? No, nope, because I don't know what you need to do. I don't know your business, I don't know your product. But what I'm saying is, if you search keywords that it should help you find communities at least with some amount of people 
but we're not going to simply join. We're going to do this little bit of reconnaissance that I was doing here. 22,000 members. I'm going to click. I'm going to check it out. Not a lot of activity, but perhaps enough of activity. Better than no one doing anything like that other community. So part of the secret here is to find the right community. Maybe that's the wrong keyword. Maybe I need to find a, a different keyword or a generic, more generic keyword. Maybe baking, maybe cooking. Maybe not cookies. Maybe I need to find baking. What if I search for the baking keyword? I found a good one. Oh, good. <laughs> baking. California. <laughs> so under baking, cakes and baking, 790,000, this, this, and that, baking 101, yep. different ways to search, finding communities. So I'm going to say here, join communities that are active. So that's check or preview the community to check plus one, reply, and share count. And I can't tell you. Make sure every post has at least seven plus ones. I can't say that either. It depends on the community. It, it depends on the shares. It depends on how recent it was. <coughs> so it takes a little bit of effort here. Similar to Twitter. Well, what's the right hashtag for me to use? I have to do a little research. Same thing here. It's all grouped together under a community. A community is kind of like a hashtag. A collection is kind of like a hashtag. It's a topic. And so here people have congregated upon a topic, but you still need to do your homework a bit. Hey, Victor? Mm -hmm. I don't think it shows because I mean, you probably see it, but it doesn't show people's views. Like, if they're just seeing it, they no. don't know that information. No, it doesn't show that. It only shows how many members. It doesn't show that statistic of, of activity, but you get that activity by seeing the actual content that people share. Yes. If you want to respond to somebody specifically that you're um, having a conversation with, do you use an at sign like you would use in like Instagram? Yes, if you want to mention a specific person, just like on Twitter or Facebook and such, if you mention their name with the at symbol, let me see if I can show an example, it will notify a specific person. So. So if I'm going to add a comment here and I want to specify a specific person, at, and then start typing a person's name, it'll give you a list of names. If they've got a very common name, it may be hard to find them. But if you want to mention a specific person name in a comment, you do the at symbol, or same thing, you can do the plus symbol, same thing. And then that person will directly get the notification that they were mentioned in the post. Some communities, I don't, oh here's one, some communities say ask to join. You're not going to be able to get into that community until someone has checked you out and then has chosen to uh, allow you in the community. So, so the ask to join means you better have something good on your profile because someone's going to check to see to let you come in. Three to five posts. Like I said, three to five posts on your profile because someone's going to check. Um, if you try to join, ask to join communities. If you try, ask to join community. Have relevant content on your profile. Those three to five posts. Another caveat read the rules. 
every community has different rules. Because communities are made by people, not by Google. Someone invented that baking community. Someone invented that California community. Someone invented that uh, you know, TV show community. Someone on Google+, Plus, a person or a business. Someone invented it within the rules of the Google network. And therefore, the person that invented it is a moderator. And that moderator can appoint other moderators. So this is then could be curated. This could be limitations. If I want to join the Kruger National Park community, somewhere it'll tell you a person might be listed as a moderator. They might have the keyword moderator next to their name. And on the left side, see if I can find an example. On the left side of the community, you may also have uh, a little kind of intro paragraph about rules. Okay, here's one. I'm in the uh, Creative Kids, 85,000 members, about community. Someone wrote this. Google didn't write this. A person wrote it. And they wrote here, welcome, feel free to jump in and share. We love comments and sharing. Hope you stick around. Okay, seems like a pretty open community. Some communities say, do not post more than three things per day. Some communities say, do not cross-post, which is posting the same thing across multiple communities. Some people say, do not post anything that is marketing. So, someone invented a rule, you break the rule. Best case scenario, your post on that community of 85,000 people is removed. Worst case scenario, you are removed from that community of 85,000 people. So, that's perhaps one of the big caveats. Follow the rules. Um, let's see if I can pull up one here of computers. Computer community, computer science, computer programmers. Okay, if I go look at computer programmers, let's see, what are their rules? Everyone's different. Join programmer, what are you waiting for? There's a bunch of links for you to go look at, perhaps, I guess. Um, this one doesn't seem to also say very much, very many rules. Some are very strict. You might have found one. <coughs> this one, I think. Okay, this community. This community. This is a troll-free zone. The community of IT, blah, 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 share ideas, vent, Helping others, free tech support, no. Treat each other with respect. Relevant topics. No link dropping. Topic hijacking. Flaming. No recruitment spam. So if I came to this IT professionals uh, community just to try to get people to join my community or to get hired by me, then they could remove me because this is not the appropriate item. Humor posts limited to real life stories. Contact the moderator. Here's the owner, Steve, Sean. So there are rules to this thing. There are limitations to what you can post here. This is always the big detriment. This this one I've on my own. I've joined this one. And I really like this one. But I've read the rules. I understand the rules, and I know that I could be kicked out of it. And unfortunately. That's the final word. If you're kicked out of a community, someone decided to kick you out for some reason, however, however petty it may be, and you can't go over to uh, Google Help Support and ask them, hey, put me back in that community. They're, they don't run it. I've personally done it. I've been in a community that was all about sharing photography, and I thought I was following all the rules, and I was sharing my photos, and I would see that my photo kept, kept getting removed. So I said, I don't know what that's about. So I shared another one. And then eventually I got removed from the community. So like, what rule did I break? So I went over to the Google Plus Help community. This is one of the ones I highly recommend, Google Help. Find the Google Help community. This, this one is officially from Google. Everything else, some guy from their basement can make a community. This one is officially from Google. One million members. This is real Google content. I went there. 
I showed screenshots. I showed the rules of the community. I said, here's the rules, here's my photo. I got kicked out. They said, sorry, the person invented that community. They can run it how they want. They remove you from it. That was the final word. So I couldn't get back to that community of 500,000 members. I had to find another one of a different amount of members. But the community didn't share with you why you got kicked out. No. It's not the community sharing. It's the moderator. And if there's one tyrant running it, it's the tyrant. if it's two or three moderators, perhaps I can plead my case to one of the other moderators. But that community had only one person with an iron grip around it. So always check who's running it. It'll, it should hopefully tell you on the left side about the community, what are the rules. Sometimes there's a post at the very top that is pinned that is always there. So check the community. Check the guidelines. Follow the rules. Yes, this is a lot of downsides. But people congregating on a topic are together at this point that if you follow the rules you could reach an audience anecdotally I can tell you from my company doing this for clients we share on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus for them we often get better results on Google Plus we go to the correct community we share an on-topic thing and we get these plus ones and comments and such um, we often get that best result on Google Plus we're about to wrap up for the day, so one final question. Mm -hmm. So our practice account that we set up today, is that automatically already public and uh, we just should start putting something in it? Yes. Okay. This is public. You can start using it. If you don't want this public, if you want to delete it, you're going to have a button over on the settings on the left side. Somewhere under settings, there will be a spot to delete this. But I would still keep it around to practice with it and then eventually I'll remind us also on the last day of class to delete these things maybe but as we're out of time of course there's still a lot to learn but hopefully you are kind of curious about this you might see why it's valuable for your business experiment with it it's all free that's one of the great things about all of the social network it's all free next week we will talk about Facebook uh, all that we need to know about Facebook after that Pinterest and so that's it for the moment. Uh, I'm afraid we're out of time, and I'll see you next time.